everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Andy, and today I'm going to be showing you this GNL ASAT special. This is from the Tribute series. Let's start by hearing some of the clean sounds, and then we'll talk about the guitar, and then we'll work on some other things. So here's the clean sound. I'm running through my Line 6 Helix, and it is on a double reverb setting. Take that for what it is. I think we can all figure it out. It's a very clean, fendery style amp. So here we go. <laughs> That was a quick run through of the clean sounds through the Helix. <clears throat> the great thing about these uh, guitars with the, uh, great pickups to begin with, are the jumbo MFD pickups, that's magnetic field design. And from what I understand, they're, they're a single coil, uh, but instead of having a taller uh, pull piece, they have a wider uh, base to them. So less windings around a wider base uh, somehow gives it more output, more clarity, all that stuff. Uh, but in the middle position here, you have hum canceling. So I have volume down on the guitar right now, but you'll hear, you probably already heard it in the clean sounds, uh, there's some buzz in the neck and the bridge pit positions, which you would expect from a single coil, uh, but in the middle, they cancel each other out nice and clean. Uh, so that is great. <clears throat> Other than that though, the guitar itself is what you would expect from a T-style guitar. Like I said, you do have the three position switch, so you've got neck by itself, neck and bridge together, and then you have the bridge pickup by itself, master volume, master tone. You've got the six in line tuners on the headstock, and these are just non branded budget tuners that come with it. Um, the, the difference really with this guitar than a typical T style, I would say, uh, I would say there are two the pickups and this bridge. Uh, while I love the traditional ashtray style bridge with the three saddles, uh, this is incredible for getting really, really precise intonation as well as uh, sustain and vibration transfer. <clears throat> the bridge itself actually sits slightly under uh, the top of the guitar. So it's bolted on top. There's a section of it that actually digs into the guitar sits inside of it, spreading the vibration throughout the whole body. And then it also has a set screw to really compress the saddles together so that they're exchanging the vibrations with each other as well. So that's the general features of this guitar. Uh, I believe this is a mahogany body. Um, I will double check on that, but I believe uh, they did mahogany for a lot of these. Uh, and then the more sunbursted finishes like this one, uh, they did more of an alder. But 
I'm pretty sure it's a mahogany body. You've got a maple neck with a rosewood fingerboard and it's built in Indonesia. So it came with a pretty, pretty standard nut, you know, somewhat affordable, uh, but less expensive hardware. Like I said, with the tuners, string tree, even the controls, the pots, the switch, it's all going to be more budget conscious to get this guitar under $500. Uh, I did notice a couple things uh, upon further inspection after the unboxing that I did that I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but before we do that, let's hear some driven sounds. So for this, I'm going to be using the same amp model uh, on the Helix, but I'm going to put a Scream 808 on top of it. It's their model of the Ibanez Tube Screamer. And we'll go through some sounds there and then... Uh, Talk about some of the things I noticed about it that I had to address, take care of, fix, whatever you'd like to call it. And then uh, I'll just play out the rest of the video with some loops and some other sounds to get a broad array of the tones that you can get with this guitar. So here we go with the driven sounds. Alright, that's just really quick through the pickups with the Scream 808 on top of the double reverb amp model in the Line 6 Helix. Now, a couple things I noticed uh, after further inspection of the guitar. So it came with 10s on it as far as strings go, and 10s are great, but I like to change out the strings on just about every guitar I get. Uh, so especially for a bolt-on style guitar like this, uh, I like to put 11s on them. It's the Daddario EXL 11510P. The 10P just means 10 pack. And it's these purple ones here. I use these on almost every electric guitar that I play. That actually went in. <clears throat> um, the Ibanez that's in the Bigsby video has different strings on it. The Casino has different strings on it. But anything this style uh, will get those 11s on it. Uh, so I did that. When I did that, I noticed I had to uh, address the nut and the slot depth. So I took all those down just a little bit. Also had to widen them slightly to accommodate some of the larger strings. Some of the strings fit in just fine, which worked out real, really well. Uh, but others I had to adjust um, just accordingly so they wouldn't bind in the nut. Um, and that they could move freely about the cabin. The biggest thing I found is there was a, an extremely high fret. Uh, up here on the 15th fret. Uh, really, it was just on the high, the B and the high E. Uh, so I'd, I'd be playing something on the 14th fret and stretch it up, bend it up, 
and it would just fret out. You'd hear buzz like crazy. Same thing playing anything on the high E around there. Uh, it would fret out because of the high the high fret. Uh, and it was getting a lot of rattling, a lot of buzzing. You know, I've tried first just at raising up the saddle. That didn't work. I uh, got out a rocker and noticed pretty quickly that that was one of the issues. So I addressed that. Uh, actually, everything from the 12th fret down, uh, I leveled it all, crowned it, polished it, all that stuff. So it plays a lot better now. Um, so that's a little bit of a, a verbal rundown of the guitar. Uh, you've heard a little bit from the pickups as far as clean sounds and driven sounds go. Now I'd just like to play out a little bit and uh, do some looping and some mediocre lead work. But uh, if you have any questions with this guitar, any comments about this video or the guitar itself, please leave those below. Uh, ask me any questions you want. And if I don't have the answers, I'll Google it and provide you those answers uh, that you can't find yourselves with Google. Great value. So let's just hear some more guitar and less talking. Here you go. My name again is Andy. Thanks for checking out this video. I'll see you later.